stuff. Uh, but we pray that our uh, this morning as we listen to the Word of God and we uh, uh, listen to the difference between the work of the Holy Spirit and the devil himself uh, uh, through the book of uh, Amos, we, we pray that our lives will be richly blessed on the praise of our Lord and Savior and strengthen for the life that lies ahead of us. Uh, may God bless us in our worship of the Spirit and the truth. Dear Heavenly Father, open our hearts to hear and through your word to each fellow near. Let each your word ever pure retain, let us your children and heirs remain. Your word inspires our hearts within. Your word grants healing from our sins. Your word has power to guide and bless. Your word brings peace and happiness. May God bless our worship in, in the spirit and in truth. In today's Old Testament reading, the prophet Amos, who previously, though previously a herdsman and a dress from the sycamore tree the figs, must speak for the Lord has called him. His word of judgment is only part of the message. In other places, he calls people to choose the Lord and live and also announces a great reversal. It, it will be covering that it's a dangerous, it, it's dangerous being a prophet, as John the Baptist learned in, in the Holy Gospel, but we know the end of the story. Before creation, we were destined to salvation as we read in the epistle. Whatever we face, our faith tells us to listen to what the Lord has to say before paying attention to any other voice. He will speak peace to his people. Let us, let us stand and say together, God of the prophets, bless the prophets on us.
Today's psalm, Psalm 85, has two parts. The first is the plea of the psalmist to God, and the second is his announcement of God's promised salvation. We now use Psalm 85 as we confess our sins and hear God's forgiveness for Jesus' sake. Lord, you were favorable to your land. You forgave the iniquity of your people. You covered all their sins. You withdrew all their wrath. You turned from your high anger. Restore us again a part of our salvation. And put away your indignation toward us. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you not allow your anger to all generations? Will you not provide us again?
first lesson I'm going to be read for this Sunday is taken from Amos, chapter 7, verses 7 through 15. This is what he showed me. Behold, the Lord was standing beside a wall built with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? I said, a plumb line. Then the Lord said, Behold, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will never again pass by them. The high places of Isaac shall be made desolate, and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste, and I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with a sword. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, said to Jeroboam, king of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the midst of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. For thus Amos has said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel must go into exile away from his land. And Amaziah said to Amos, O seer, go, flee away to the land of Judah, and eat bread there, and prophesy there, but never again prophesy at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary, and it is the temple of the kingdom. Then Amos answered and said to Amaziah, I was no prophet, nor a prophet's son, but I was a herdsman in the dress of sycamore things. But the Lord took me from following the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go, prophesy to my people Israel. This is the word of the Lord. Put him to death, but she could not, for Herod. 
you hear it in a lot of circles, know your enemy. In a sports, a sports team will study the feelings of the other team to learn their plays, their strategy, and identify their strengths and weaknesses. A chess master will study the games of the other chess masters to know the opponent's strategies. And in the business world, a company will study it. In a much more serious matter, though, you should know your ultimate enemy. The old evil foe now means deadly woe. Deep Kyle and great might are history at arms in flight. What are the aims and goals of the old evil one? We have to know. We have to know. The devil, the ruler of this world, what, what's his agenda? His strategies, his tactics, it all comes in annoying your enemy. Well, certainly the devil wants to seek all manner of violence and wickedness. The more of that, the happier the devil is. But the center, the very core of what he's about is unbelief. Drawing us completely away from our Lord. He wants to keep unbelievers in unbelief, dead in their sins. He wants to entice them and draw believers away from the Lord and Savior, away from their faith to unbelief. He wants to see unbelief with death. Temporal and eternal death. He wants us to see that's the only future. That's the only future he wants us to see. But what does the Holy Spirit do? The Holy Spirit wants to create and sustain faith in the heart. Wants to tighten the bonds between you and your Savior, Jesus the Messiah. To help you become a stronger, more mature. To grow in Christ. Not to remain the same, but to grow in Christ. You know, I've always said, you're growing or declining or growing, growing weaker or growing either way. So how does the Holy Spirit do that? To help us become stronger, more mature Christians. How does the Holy Spirit do that? By means of the Word of God. That's the means. The Holy Spirit does not work directly or without instruments. He works through the Word of God. Claimed in its truth and purity, not just a word of God, but the word of God. That's in all its truth and purity. And through the law of God, he leads sinners to contrition and repentance. And through the promises of God fulfilled in Christ, he creates and sustains faith and gives joy. Holy Spirit works completely through the Word of God that you hear, that you study in your homes, that you, that you listen to. The devil's simple goal is to prevent sinners from hearing the Word of God. He wants to keep you and me hearing from, from hearing, really listening, I mean really listening, and taking seriously what the Lord God and what he has to say in that. Test the spirit to see if they're a God. Test the spirit. 
experience to see if they're a God. I judge them. God judges them. Test the spirits against them. God's word. It wasn't still a competitive environment at that time with all the voices. But the question is, which voice are we going to continue to listen to? Or are we listening to other voices? Another common approach that the devil uses as a strategy is to silence the proclaimers. Silence the proclaimers of God's word. Just silence them. It said that the prophet Isaiah was sawn in hand. The mighty seer of old executed like so much garbage. The apostle Paul was beheaded. Peter was crucified. Crucified, matter of fact, Peter is known that they have been crucified upside down. Very often the prophets and apostles were pursued and imprisoned, and because Elijah was constantly threatened. The prophet uh, Jeremiah, as well as Paul, often found himself in prison. But who's got the last slide? God. God's got the last slide. The, writing of, the writings of the prophets and apostles were preserved and we can hear and study them to this day. God cannot and will not be silenced. His word endures. The devil, the ruler of this fallen or corrupted world, strives to prevent sinners from hearing the word of God. And one instance is our Old Testament reading, recorded in uh, Amos 7. And let's Take a time machine and jump back to 750 BC or around 760 BC before Christ. It's going to happen to Bethel, about 10 miles north of Jerusalem. You see, when Solomon died, the northern 10 tribes separated from the southern tribes. You will see the north seceded from the, from the Union. But the Creator of all made ancient Israel his very own covenant people, and that included the ten northern tribes as well. So God raised the prophets like Elijah and Elisha to proclaim the word to the people. And now God calls Amos. Amos, as we said, was in Bethel, where throngs of people had gathered. Instead of they began to gather to worship, and instead of worshiping at the temple in Jerusalem, as they should have been doing, the north set up its own sanctuaries, one in Bethel, in that far north part, and Dan in the far south part, just south, just north of the southern kingdom. Amos was called and sent by the true God to proclaim that the true God, what God had to say. Therefore, Amos would repeatedly emphasize just this point, which is mentioned in your bulletin in the, in the outline. Thus spoke Yahweh, the God of Israel, or the utterance of Yahweh. The true God wanted his word to be proclaimed to the people, and through the word, the Holy Spirit works, as we covered before. That's the tool the Holy Spirit uses to strengthen our faith. And therefore Amos kept saying, listen to what the Lord God Almighty has to say. Listen to what he has to say. But the authority of the false sanctuary of Bethel, they didn't want to hear it. They didn't want to hear it. And of course the authority was Amaziah. Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, complained about Amos to the king in Samaria. Southern Kingdom. 
might overthrow the northern kingdom. And through the, his prophets, the true God spoke to sinners to give them life. But the opponents reduced the word of God to worldly politics, as if everything is only about worldly politics and economy, economics. Amaziah considered Amos. He was the, he was the priest that he preached up in up in Bethel, where Amos was preaching. He considered Amos the prophet of the true God to be fomenting, to be inciting conspiracy. And Amaziah discounted what Amos was proclaiming as only words from Amos. Invented by Amos to serve the political goals of Amos and that of the southern kingdom. Listen to what he reported to King, to King Jericho. For thus Amos has said, Amos has been emphasizing Thus spoke Yahweh the God of Israel, but Amaziah considered it only a human message and a human opinion of the man of Jesus. The old evil foe tries to bring men sinners to hearing the life-giving word of God. One of his strategies, all the way back then before Christ, this is the only way he does it. By leading people to discount it, to trivialize that word of God, to ignore it, to as simply human speech and human opinion. But Amos said, Thus spoke God. Thus spoke God. And the opponents say, No, that's only what you say, preacher man. And Amaziah tried to pressure Amos to leave and go back to his home to, in Tekoa and Judah, about 10 miles south of Jerusalem. And he said in verse 12, O oh, Caesar, go flee away to the land of Judah. Flee, as if your life is in danger, the implication was. See, Amaziah pretended to be Amos' friend, who, hears for, who fears for Amos' life when Amaziah was the one who reported Amos to the king in the first place. Amazon. When they say, don't impose your 
religion on us on me, but as you say today, keep your religion to yourself. Don't give me all that religious mumble jumble. Such an assessment is actually true about false religions. But it's not the true about the authentic word of God, the powerful word of God. Know your enemy. Know your enemy. Your ultimate enemy, the enemy of the old evil foe, wants to prevent you from hearing that life-giving word of God himself and all of your friends. The enemy wants sinners to listen only to themselves. The powers of the old age, of the old age, wanted Amos, the prophet of God, to leave. In fact, his life was in danger. Listen to what the Lord God Almighty has to say. And as I am, would have agreed with the adage, it's all about power. Getting it and keeping it. And as I had no intention of listening and repenting, he was only, he was only about self-preservation in that power. And he assumed he was was too. But Amos was called and sent by the Lord God Almighty himself to proclaim God's word. Amos remained and kept on proclaiming the word of God. In fact, in the next two verses, Amos responded to Amaziah's pressure tactic by announcing God's judgment against Amaziah himself. Then Amos repeated his message to all of Israel. And the word of God spoken by Amos was written down and preserved. We have it here today. We heard it again today. You see, the word of God is will endure forever. And whenever you, you and I proclaim it to people, it won't return void. But it will accomplish what to God the Holy Spirit wants it to accomplish. Well then, Amos repeated this his message to all of Israel. The word of God spoken by Amos has been preserved as we see today. And to this day, now over 2,700 years later, we still read, mark, learn, inwardly digest the word of God spoken by the prophet Amos. He doesn't hide himself in secrecy. The word of God still remains. It will not be silenced. God is the God who speaks. The true God is the Almighty Maker of heavens and earth. And, it, and that was why Amos, God called Amos so that ancient Israel would turn away from their evil and turn to the Lord, the true God. That was that's the main purpose of, of God Himself, the Holy Spirit. Turn, using his word to turn people away from their sins or acknowledge their sins and then amend their sinful lives and to live with joy of knowing Christ in their hearts. And only the word of the true God can lead sinners of that endless cycle of sin and death. So Amos announced God's coming judgment against sinners and the death of sins, whether it's for Israel or for any, any kind of nation, God sent Amos to He loves his creation. He loves every person. He doesn't agree with what they do. But he loves us. And wants us to come to the knowledge of our sins and be saved. What a powerful love that is. Why, so why does God bother to such a father to have his word proclaimed? Because of the promises. And you can see how that how how dream during the time of Amos, how the promise was fulfilled. The fullness of time, God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to come. God, through the promise of prophet Amos, also spoke a promise, a sure and certain promise that one day God would reverse the judgment. And so did. The fullness of time, his prophetic promise was fulfilled by God. Fulfilled big time. Jesus of Nazareth is the new and greater divinity king. Not only like David, but also David's Lord. Jesus, as we can see, it kind of reminds me of the life that Amos went through, but even Israel himself embodied Israel and went through death just like before Christ. 
Christ is. So, in our, in our, the, listen to what God has to say. Don't let the death, don't let the evil pull and drive you away or, or separate you from His Word. Only His Word can lead you to daily repentance. Only His Word. If we rationalize in our own minds, it's not going to come about. But only His Word can sustain faith in your heart. Only His Word can lead you to eternal life. Despite the many confusing voices in this world, listen to what the Lord God Almighty has to say. Please let us rise and sing the title to worship a mighty fortress is our God. Lord, in your mercy. 
history was often as we heard it and we have it as our name. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until it comes. Amen. Amen. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming from the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom.
strengthen it and surface of the truth page.
September. I know I'm going to be no one, and we'll uh, give everybody a call. But uh, uh, there, there will not be, as far as I, I had planned it myself, so that there will, will be owners and council meeting on, on Tuesday evening, July 13th. Also, in our, uh, I, I just, I've been just astounded at the, at the blessing that God showed to us yesterday, right now, the very sunshine that we have in the, uh, the outdoor activities and the hike that we took and the, uh, uh, the games that we played outside, just astounding. I, I think that, uh, you know, we had, uh, clearly help us, we had 19, Matter of fact, I asked them, I asked some of them to come as helpers, but they, but they enjoyed themselves in being in the games and that also. So praise God for that and thank you. But look ahead to the second day, the second day on uh, on the 21st of, of August. Uh, just a few announcements on that. Uh, it's still in the stages, but and I have to kind of counsel with the uh, with the elders. As far as the, uh, the plans go for that, but on August 21st, from, from 10 to 2 again, will be would be the second day. Uh, but the the, the uh, uh, we're trying to develop it into a into a family a family uh, instead of a closing for vacation Bible school, we want to get a family celebration or a family picnic type of thing with with games on there. And, and keep on praying the day from here on until August 21st on a good day. But I know it's all in God's hands. And he'll provide it. He'll provide it. Uh, but uh, August 21st, uh, the, um, the picnic is planned, I think, probably around 1 o'clock in the afternoon. You know, uh, so we'll, we'll have more plans on that. But uh, the, uh, where it says the blessing of the pets, plan to have a tent up and uh, hopefully that uh, we can maybe have an outdoor service. But that's going to be clear through the morning hours also. Uh, uh, and that's that's when the blessing of the pets will come in. Because I'm sure that the, the blessing of the pets, they wouldn't want to sit there for that long. The pets themselves, I mean. <laughs> so maybe uh, if you have questions about it, let me know. It's all in the planning stages right now. You have a quilting uh, there, and uh, the, uh, uh, everyone, please, uh, the, the message from the secretary, fill out the young lieutenant's card, place it in the automobile in the back of the church to help us in our, you know, help us in our kind of record keeping and our civil care. Okay, any other announcements? Yes. Shall we sing happy birthday? 